Helene White, thank you very much for sitting with us on top of an <laughs> engine or the wing of an aeroplane. Um, we're here to talk to you really about uh, your flying mm -hmm. and how you started to fly. Tell us a little bit about how you got to Cranfield, but particularly at Cranfield Flying School. Um, basically because I live so close by, um, it was the easiest place to get to, to have lessons and um, I got a trial lesson and that was at Cranfield. Um, that was at Bed School of Flying, so I came up and had that lesson. Do you feel that there is a sense of an aviation community here? At, at this school, yes, yeah. at Cranfield Flying School, definitely. It's much more of a club. Um, it's some place you can actually go, even if you're not flying, you can go and sit and have coffee and chat and learn. But you're embarking on your airline transportation pilot's license theory. Mm. Yeah and at Cranfield Flying School is predominantly set up for the professional students. Yeah. Do you feel that there is too much of a professional aspect or although it's an element of seriousness there is still a feeling of kind of relaxed? I, th I think the, the atmosphere is just about right. It's not too formal and it's not too informal so when you, when you walk in you do get a feeling of professionalism there and I think that's necessary for confidence building. And with all the different instructors that you've flown with mm. and been taught by, what makes a good instructor? I think the key thing is patience and for the instructor to begin to understand the pupil and how the pupil or the student actually learns, I think that's really important. I think um, that kind of aspect is uh, key. What makes you so passionate about flying? I just think it's an amazing, an amazing thing. You know, you go from trundling down the runway in, in what feels like a reliant robin, and then in a split second, you're just away, free, and up in the air, and it's the most unbelievable feeling ever. But why not stop at the private pilot's license phase? It, it's hard to describe, really, but it's just something, and it's... I think you would either love it or hate it and it, it really gets into your blood and I wake up in the morning I think about flying, I go to bed at night thinking about flying and you know all day it's just on my mind and when there's aircraft coming over it's just something that becomes all consuming I think and it, it's been in my background that I've wanted to do for so long. Do you get frustrated when you see that maybe some aspects of aviation is not as gender equal as it could be? I've not come across that. Um, the job I had before, you know, when I was working um, full time outside aviation, it was quite noticeable then, but I've not actually seen anything that would make me think that in aviation. So you don't find at Cranfield there aren't more women pilots learning to fly? I think there needs to be more. Um, I think it's a male-dominated um, area, definitely. But I think um, I think more females would be interested if they were more aware of what was happening. So, how did you become aware of flying, as opposed to why aren't more women aware of this? What can we do to make this? What can we do to raise more awareness about aviation for everybody? I think it's just getting the word out and I think if you're trying to attract females you need to have females that are going to be doing that um, because some, not me personally, but I think some women would be put off by the fact that it's all men and they don't want that and they want um, you know, somebody female to talk to or somebody that they can relate to and I think that makes the difference. Is there a difference therefore between the attitude, the aptitude and the focus learning to fly at the private pilot's license end mm. to what you're now doing at the commercial end. Mm. What are those yeah. differences? I think the, the application that you need, the personal application that you need to do ATPL is, is 
completely separate to the application that you would need to do your PPL and your seven exams at PPL. Um, it, you, need to be, you need to be quite driven to do it. With PPL you can sort of drift through it, with ATPL you can't and it's 100% determination to get through it. So do you think everybody could have the aptitude for the ATPL? Basically, I think if you've gone through your PPL then yes, because I never thought I'd be able to do it. Um, I always thought it was, you know, you look at the amount of study material and the different topics that you have to cover and you think, I'd never be able to do that, but you can. Um, and, you know, I've got, I've got halfway through my exams now and I'm, I'm, it's getting easier. And the application that I have to give, it's, it's getting easier. Well, you must be a genius because <laughs> you have got... I believe, if I'm allowed to say, 100% in yeah. more than one exam and subject. Yes. And what subjects were they? <laughs> communications. Right. Um, IFR and VFR communications are two separate exams. Um, but from what I know with IFR, it's a pretty taxing on the brain. Yeah. I mean, I think if you... It's a case of concentrating and focusing on what you're doing and, and revising, basically. <laughs> Does it feel like a sacrifice for you to give up a lot of things to focus on your passion? No, not at all. So you don't see it not that at all. way? No. How do no. you look at it? To me, it's because I've always wanted to be involved in it, I've always wanted to do it, it's like living the dream, to be able to think about nothing else. There are 14 different exams um, for the ATPL and I think some of, the, some of them seem to be duplicated so you've general nav and radio nav um, and then I think the most complicated one is probably aircraft systems um, which is split into three different sections where you used to do electrics, power plant and airframe as well and that's classed as one exam. Is there a particular subject that is going to be harder for you than another? I think that depends on your individuality, but for me, um, I've, I've enjoyed all the subjects, but I think general nav, and, and the feedback I've had when I've, when I've been to the exams, I think general nav is quite a sticky subject. And once you have these exams, what are you going to do with this uh, HPL theory? I'd like, to, I'd like to actually give back what I've got, so I'd like to do some teaching. Um, because you're a great communicator, we know. <laughs> well, I've passed the exam. <laughs> yeah. um, and, I, you know, I used to think about being a teacher uh, many years ago. But now, after speaking to the tutors that I have at London Met and getting to know them and seeing the, the people here at, at Cranfield Flying School, it's something that, you know, I sort of think, I think I really, really want to do that. Is part of that about trying to share what you love with other people? Yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, it's, some things seem so obvious, but you need a little bit of explanation sometimes, and having the, you know, the patience to explain to some people about a subject that obviously fascinates them, and you can share your knowledge with them. I think that's, you know, that's quite a challenging. So you want to be a flight instructor? I'd like to be able to instruct in the air, mm -hmm. and on the ground as well. Um, so I'm quite interested in doing that. And I'd, I'd love to be a flying instructor. And yeah. have you got a favourite aeroplane here that you like to fly? I have, Godfrey, Char uh, Godfrey Charles. <laughs> Golf Echo Go Charlie, Golf, Golf Charlie, Charlie yeah. Cessna 172 <laughs> That's the one, with yeah. two BOB. <laughs> That's the one. Well, yeah. funnily enough, that also happens to be my favourite aeroplane. Mm. Mostly because it's the only one I can fly. <laughs> so I have to love <laughs> you it. You have to love it. But yeah, I do like that aircraft. I do. So as a sort of a leaving comment for people watching this, and those that are thinking about doing mm. this but might have doubts about it, mm. what would you say to them? Do it. It's not, it's not as hard as you think it is. And it's so interesting, and that, that sounds really nerdy, but it's just fascinating, the subject. And the more you do about it, the easier it gets to do the study. Because you think, 
you know, you're going to learn about this next and you've always wanted to know about this and then that comes up and... Do you ever stop learning when you're a pilot? No. No. Um, I don't think you can. Uh, uh, Sullenberger, 40,000 hours, he'd never had to ditch and all of a sudden he's learned now that he can ditch a plane. Mm. So you never stop learning. There's always something new, always something better you can be doing and improving. I look forward to having my first flying <laughs> lesson with you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you very much. No worries. Interesting. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Well. Okay, it's a change of plan. Okay, again, you know, we'll be Continue, 3, link 3, to expect Sound 3, 7.